Hello, I'm Terry McCann with the fourth in my five-part series titled An Introduction to Lean Concepts. After introducing lean in part two and then the concept of waste in part three, we now look at the question, what is hijunker and value stream mapping? Hijunker or production leveling is what an organization does to smooth out the volume and mix of the daily production schedule in order to reduce variation or mura on a daily basis as much as possible and provide the customer with only as much as they really need when they need it. In the same way, the process owner only draws as much raw material and resource as is needed to meet the customer demand. When working ideally, this reduces the need for large warehouse storage and the risk associated with carrying large inventory and unsold goods. Hijunker was foundational to what Toyota called their just-in-time production system and their ascendancy to the top of the auto manufacturing world. Here is a graphic that illustrates Hijunker, Mura, Muri and Muda. The horizontal line in the center is the line of optimal capacity with the given resources. The red line illustrates a cycle of Mura over a monthly period where in this cyclical example, the month begins with a lot of slack, idle time and underutilization of resources. In other words, muda. As the month progresses, there is more and more pressure to produce and deliver. In the second half of the month, all resources come under a lot of strain, particularly the workforce, as overtime becomes the order of the day. This is muri. Of course, Muri also heightens risk for Muda, not shown on this graphic. The green line shows how the application of Hijunker has a smoothing effect to dampen the impact firstly of Muda and then, as a consequence, reduce Muri and Muda. In a typically complex production line, Hijunker has to be calculated and applied at a number of processing points where new materials, activities and resources come into play. These process steps need to be identified and their parameters described. How do we do this? We create a value stream map. Put simply, a value stream map, usually referred to as a VSM, is a graphical map of the value stream. The value stream is the flow of materials and information through the sequential steps in the process of producing goods or services, clearly showing where transformation takes place to add value. Value, of course, as defined by the customer. Importantly, it also shows where there are activities and events that do not add value. The value stream, always seen from the point of view of the customer or consumer, can be viewed at various levels, from very high, as in this illustration, or drilling down to any useful level of interest. The value stream map provides some important standard metrics for making decisions about eliminating waste, such as each of the process steps with its changeover or setup time, and the process step cycle time per unit, any inventory on hand for each step, supporting information, a box score providing key operational metrics such as total lead time and how much of that time is time truly adding value for the customer and any other metrics of use to the organization. Along with cycle time, the VSM usually also shows lead time and tact time. Lead time is the total amount of elapsed time required. It is the total length of time it takes for one piece to flow through an entire process from start to finish. From the manufacturer's point of view, it is how long it takes to complete a work order. But from the customer's point of view, it is how long they have to wait for delivery after placing a purchase order for an item that is not off the shelf. Cycle time, on the other hand, is the average time between pieces emerging from a given process. If you turn the fraction upside down to get the inverse, then you get the delivery rate or average completion rate, also called ACR. 
If you know the delivery rate and the work in progress, or WIP, you can calculate lead time. Lead time equals work in progress divided by the delivery rate. This equation is known as Little's Law. Knowing any two variables in the equation allows you to calculate the third. Thus, if you know the time available and the ACR, you can calculate the inventory that the process is capable of producing. Tact time is similar to cycle time, but is driven by actual customer demand and actual time available. While cycle time can be measured with a stopwatch, and often is, tact time is always a calculation. Tact time equals available time divided by customer demand. We will come back to this important metric later. So to illustrate some of these metrics, Imagine that a small business entrepreneur with three employees and herself in a third world country sources parts and material to assemble and distribute bicycles to retail outlets, selling an average of 160 bicycles per week in total. No manufacturing is done. Wheels are delivered with cogs, spokes and rims pre-assembled, although alignment needs to be checked and tires and tubes still need to be fitted and inflated. To produce these 160 bicycles, the business works four shifts of eight hours and one shift of 10.67 hours per week, which means two hours and 40 minutes of overtime per week. Parts and components are ordered once per week and finished bicycles are shipped every Wednesday. Two workers spend four days doing wheel assembly and then one day changing over to do packaging and dispatch. Thus, we know two variables from our Little's Law equation. Work in progress inventory equals 160 bicycles. Lead time equals 42 hours and 40 minutes. Simplifying the equation from Little's Law, we see that the average completion rate is 3.8 bicycles per hour. and The cycle time is 15 minutes and 45 seconds per bicycle. The business owner would like to use lean and value stream mapping to reduce overtime costs and staffing issues. They have considered and decided against employing more staff until trying a lean solution. Before showing a value stream map of our bicycle assembly process, let's have a look at the most commonly used VSM symbols. A process box. This describes an activity for adding value. The outside source identifies suppliers and customers. The same symbol is used for both. A truck indicates delivery from a supplier or to a customer. An information box describes information transmitted in the value stream. The electronic information transmission arrow does just that. The manual information transmission arrow does the same thing manually, usually using paper forms. The inventory symbol is used for any stored inventory, whether raw materials, in process or finished goods. It will usually have some additional text describing quantity or duration. Here are some more of the most commonly used value stream map symbols and icons. Finished goods movement. This indicates a supplier moving goods to the company or the company moving finished product to the customer. Remember that product may be goods or services. The material push arrow indicates material being pushed through the process, usually according to the production schedule. The material pull symbol shows material moving as a result of a special signal known as Kanban. A supermarket is a controlled environment for in-process inventory. The operator symbol indicates the presence of an operator for the process. If more than one operator is required, then a number is added to the symbol. A Kaizen burst indicates an area of opportunity for Kaizen improvement activity. More about Kaizen later. So, 
have toothbrush, we'll travel. We have our map symbols. Where do you start? Start with a current state VSM. To make sure that it is actual current as opposed to should be current, go and observe. The Japanese lean term for this at Toyota is Genchi Genbutsu or simply Gemba. Don't draw the map in the boardroom before walking through the process, respectfully meeting with the employees and noting what is actually being done. Then, once the map is drawn, walk the production floor once more, verifying that the map is correct. Shoulds and oughts have no place in the current state VSM. In our example, we find the following processes in place. Customer order processing, production scheduling and orders on suppliers, supplier delivery, front and back wheel assembly, assembly on the frame, final assembly and inspection, packaging and dispatch. The next slide shows you the finished current state value stream map. There will be some moments of silence for you to examine what is on the VSM, but pause the presentation if you would like more time to review the map. In our current state VSM, the cycle starts on the top right with the retailer placing an order. Production planning orders components and materials and schedules production. Suppliers deliver orders and bicycles are assembled starting with wheel assembly. Work in progress passes through frame assembly, final assembly and inspection. The production cycle finishes with packaging and dispatch of finished articles to retail customers. This VSM was produced for this presentation using Microsoft Excel. Many proponents of Lean advocate doing the VSM by hand on a whiteboard or flip chart and then capturing the end result with a camera for digital storage and distribution. My own experience is that a big whiteboard works well and lends itself more to local team involvement in the creation of the VSM. Pause this presentation to take more time to study the current state value stream map. Once the map is drawn, verify that each process and function is based upon standardized work. Are the process steps the same regardless of operator, including preparation steps? Is the in-process inventory the same? The same lot quantities for process materials, components, consumables and output. This is not about suffocating bureaucratic policies and procedures. Without standardized work processes, you have no basis for improvement. If you do not have standardized work processes, then the first improvement would have to be standardizing and documenting what is agreed upon as best practice for a particular value adding activity and then following that standard process until it gets improved and a new standardized process gets documented. Now that we have our current state value stream map, how do we apply high junker leveling to our processes to minimize Muda, Muri and Mura? and ensure that we maximize adding of customer value through our process activities and effort. To answer this, we need to look at Kaizen, the next element for us to examine in the Lean methodology. Take another break and then move on to view the next presentation in the introduction to Lean concept series entitled, What is Kaizen? I'm Terry McCann, if you have questions or comments regarding this presentation, send an email to terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca I would love to hear from you.